Who are you gonna call? Not them. 911. Let's talk about it. Are you out? 911, what's your emergency? I think I hear a baby cry in the wall. How's the baby on the wall? No, 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 not on the wall. In the wall. There's a baby inside my wall. I, I think someone flushed a baby down the toilet. What? 12 seconds later. I thought that's just a joke we did as medical students listening to the wall to hear the other room with the stethoscope. Oh my god. A premature baby that cries loudly enough that you can hear it through a wall and a pipe and it's surviving through water. I mean like, this is just ridiculous. Alright, good job. Get the head out, Bobby. Get the head yeah, out. You gotta push him below. This is not how I've delivered babies when I delivered babies. Not from pipes. <laughs> so much wrong with this. Okay, pull her up. Pull her up. Pull her up. Fakest her up. baby, too. All right, she's never been starting CPR. Come on. Correct form with the hands, but gotta push a little deeper, man. This is such a ridiculous scene that I would say this would never happen, but I know one of you is gonna pull out an article where one person in some small rural area this happened to and they survived. And you guys are gonna be like, see Mike, you don't know what you're talking about as a doctor. Mike, Mike, shit. Your daughter just had a baby. We have to get her to the hospital. No, is that the mother? No, screw her. She's bleeding out. She She's a child. Hey. That's ridiculous. You don't get to play judge and jury. You got to save everyone's life, especially when it comes to a child who's lost a lot of blood. Who knows if she's in her right state of mind? Yo, if this baby dies, it's on you. Why would the baby die and why is it on her? What does she have to do with anything? Who is choking you? Do you know him? <laughs> Oh, that's a boa. Snake fans, help me out here. That's a problem. Um, yes, call for help. Bobby, it's no use. That thing is like 10 feet long. It's constriction strength. It's like 50 pounds per square inch. Everyone is Dr. House. Oh, crap, it's getting really tight. I think we're gonna have to put it down. Okay, stand back. Spartacus. Yeah, well, it was him or you, and uh, I face a situation like that. I always choose to save the more attractive one. <laughs> I hope he gets fired after a statement like that. Would you ever speak to a patient that way? I would not. <laughs> Respectfully. What's your emergency? Sh -sh shark! Shark! A man's been attacked by a shark! Oh, man. Are you on, ma'am? We're not on the beach, we're on the freeway! What? <laughs> this show is so incredible! What the hell? Tiger shark! We were transporting her from the lease into the wild truck jackknife. The truck jackknifed, and how did the guy's arm end up into? <laughs> The shark? Someone needs to explain that to me. Do we wait that long or just, you know? No, no, okay. don't kill her! She's come so far! <laughs> Award for empathy goes to that gentleman. He's getting his arm literally torn off, and he's like, think about the shark. All right, let's get him transported now! Nice and easy. From a brachial artery laceration, you can die in seconds. How deep is it? <laughs> yeah, his full arm. It's a whole thing is it? And behold, the salabasana. Oh, everything hurts. The baby, is he okay? Check your baby right now, okay? I'm gonna touch you right here in your stomach. Okay, there's no trauma to the abdomen. Why would there be trauma to the abdomen? She's doing yoga. Easy, I'm gonna take you. All right, I'm gonna take care of that. You take care of this. Here we go, I got you, I got you. I think I'm having contractions. Are they real contractions, though? All right, what's your name? Beth. Okay, I need a cup of water for Beth. Am I in labor? I think it's Braxton Hicks. It's a... <laughs> I mean, Braxton Hicks' contractions are something reasonable to think about. How he knew that instantly without understanding if she's totally in labor or not, I have no idea. That's kind of ridiculous. You get you nice and relaxed and hydrated, okay? okay? There's just, like, really good questions to be asked here, not are you thirsty? <laughs> Oh my god, my water broke. <laughs> what is this class? I don't know, what's your emergency? My son, he hit his head on the diving board and he's not breathing. Oh my god, he's turning blue. I need you to perform CPR on him. Interesting that they'd say to perform CPR right away. I would like to check for a pulse first, but if he's turning blue, that probably means he's not breathing, he's pulseless, he's not responsive. Again, chest compressions, chest compressions, chest compressions. It's not about mouth to mouth anymore. It's about pumping the heart and causing it to push the blood throughout your system, which still has some oxygen in it. Water out. Come around, starting compressions. Pulse I mean, I would have loved to 
see them check for a pulse here. He's underwater? I don't know, Five, six, six, humans seven. maybe. Those are terrible chest compressions. They have to be at least two inches deep. You have to risk breaking ribs in order for them to be effective. Remember, the job of the chest compressions is to actually compress the heart. And if you're just doing them superficially, you're just doing it for a show. They are doing it for a show. I guess that's okay. As soon as help arrives, most people just hang up. Yeah. <laughs> what are you, sad? Uh, okay, just hang on. <laughs> that's a no-no. Never point anything with gun at yourself. Nail gun, paintball gun, cap gun. Gun? Gun. <laughs> He needs a level one trauma surgeon stat. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Don't, pull, don't it pull it out. No, do not remove the nail. Help is on the way. I'm gonna clear your shirt so we can see what we're working with. Dude, do not clear anything. Put him on the stretcher and bring him to the hospital where emergency surgery can happen. You hit the bullseye. <sighs> Who makes jokes like that? Hit the bullseye. Nice and easy. Bring it around. Sure. Careful. If he hit a lung, he's also gonna have a collapsed lung there as well. Take a few deep breaths for me. <laughs> Bro, just put him on the stretcher, bring him to the hospital. Stop, stop torturing the man. I need to get you to the hospital for pericardiocentesis. That's where they'll drain the fluid. Dude, you don't even know what is the extent of the damage. This is ridiculous that they're diagnosing him already knowing everything that's happening. Do you know why I'm getting so angry? Because too often patients come in and someone does this like incorrect diagnosis thing on the go. And then I have to come in and correct all this misinformation and it confuses patients. It's hard enough to hear what's happening here when you have a nail gun in your heart. But then imagine trying to deal with who's right, who's wrong. Of course I did, why? That is not a good rhythm. <laughs> Oh, oh. Yep, that's a problem. That is a problem. Fix it at the hospital, but only if he's not dead. <laughs> In this case, there's nothing you can do. The only thing you can do is try and resuscitate. But like pulling the nail out, pushing the nail further in, you're only gonna do more damage. Come on, you're not leaving your daughter hanging like that. We got a pulse. Oh. Yep. Heart's beating again. Yeah, heart's beating again, but he's actively bleeding out. There's like zero use for celebrating here. It's quite often that a patient gets resuscitated with CPR only to lose their pulse shortly thereafter. So like, this is not a win by any means. Can't move my neck. Oh no. Is that, is that a Phineas Gage situation right now? Got a piece of rebar through his skull. How is that even possible? No, it's possible. Brain tissue has no nociceptors. It can't feel pain. That is actually true, however, the meninges feel pain, skin feels pain, and you know all those videos circulating around with the person playing an instrument while they're doing brain surgery? That can happen because the brain has no pain receptors. What, 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 why aren't you guys like cutting me out of here? It's complicated. Why? You've been injured, Jim. Well, how bad is it? It's not good. What, what is this conversation thing that happens? This is not real. Just do your job. You're 911. Don't start taking selfies and FaceTiming your friends. 911, what's your emergency? Mm, no, burning up. I, I, um, I smelled something burning. Oh my God. We all kept trying to tell him to get it fixed. She couldn't have unplugged it? How the hell didn't he just get out? He might have had a stroke. How did he know he has a stroke? I mean, these guys with their like house MD ridiculous diagnoses. Me too, may have had a stroke. Drugs could be an underlying cause. What was he on? What is this guy? He's on drugs. How do you know? Look at him. What do you mean, look at him? Starting compressions. Good compressions. Yeah, that's normal, so keep going. I mean, not normal, but normal if your skin's so damaged, but the chest compressions override that. Because remember, when someone's heart stops, that means they're dead. So whether or not you damage their skin, they're already dead. Try and bring them back. Nope, he's gone. What do you mean, nope, he's gone? Do more chest compressions, try and bring him back. My hands got dirty, he's gone. I'm getting mad at the show. We have a stunt, so daring. A video, so bold. It might just break the internet. Oh my God, is this a YouTube challenge, a TikTok challenge? Hey. What is the purpose of this? How is the bike not moving? <laughs> 
how long has that poor guy been on there? He's probably like completely out of it. Hey, can you hear me? Oh! Oh, that's a problem. Need an ophthalmology consult stat? Could be G-lock. G-force poisoning from the force of the spin? Right now, all his blood is pulling inside his head. It's pressing against his brain, which is why he's out cold. I don't know if that's G-lock. G-lock is when you essentially have your blood go to the lower part of your body and you're not getting enough circulation. And this is a very big problem for uh, F-16 pilots. I actually flew an F-16, so I studied this. Click the video down below. I would not do this without an ophthalmologist on site. I would not do this. Like, there's no way firefighters or first responders would do this. Wow, that was th super. Eventually, could you die from spinning that much? I mean, you could die from anything. Like, can you run to your death? Yeah. Speaking of G-forces, check out this video of me flying an F-16. That's right, I experienced 9.2 Gs. Check it out, and as always, stay happy and healthy. But really, check this out. I was like, mm -hmm.